This Saturday, Jamaica Plain will once again open its porches and yards for a performing arts festival. This year's JP Porch Fest will have everything from rhythm and blues and Latin music to post-punk indie rock, not to mention comedy, poetry, and circus acts. To explain how it all comes together are two guys from Porch Fest, co-producers Marie Gitman and Mindy Freed. Thank you very much for being with us. Thanks, Thanks. for having us. I'll talk with Mindy Freed. I mean, this has been going on for how many years now? About We're now going to year four. Year, year four, and you know, I, I look at your lineup, and it, it keeps changing. I mean, it's quite. A, talk about the difference in the mix this year. Well, every year we say, okay, this is we have enough porches, enough bands, and let's just kind of cap it at that. But um, it, it just keeps growing. So this year we have roughly the same number of bands, but we have more porches. So instead of eighty something, we have ninety five, and uh, we continue to expand to different kinds of art forms. And so the theater porch and the dance porch are coming together at Loring Greeno House. It's going to be amazing. We have seven different theater companies. Um, Comedy is great. We have two spoken word porches. Um, you know, it's it, it storytelling, uh, children's activities, uh, so much is happening. And then we've, we've added some other... Now, now for people who, who might be from a little uh, outside the neighborhood, talk about that particular uh, backyard there at the Loring Reno House, because this, this is quite, you know, you get some room there. It's pretty special. <laughs> and some shade, too. Yeah, some <laughs> shade. And, yeah. So, well, Loring Reno House, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really kind of come alive in the past few years, and I think current people who are running it have been very uh, gracious and generous uh, and have allowed us to use the space for all kinds of things. So, uh, for a couple of years, we had a dance porch there, and we had, uh, which was run by an organization called Meta Movements Latin Dance Company. Um, but this year we decided that we would combine theater and dance so that people who generally would be drawn to theater would also be exposed to dance and vice versa. So we rent a dance floor from the Boston Dance Alliance. Uh, it's a great spring wood floor and uh, we put it sort of in the shade. Um, and we're going to have this combination of these seven theater companies that I mentioned, a real wide range. Uh, and then we have a few dance companies and then we have a house party from four to six. So with a DJ. So. What about some of the things in the mix musically? Uh, because there is quite a range. You've got what, things like folk music, indie rock, uh, Latin music. Yes, we have. We have. I think it's now 205 different bands or individual musicians. So you can imagine that runs the gamut from, you know, solo musicians, uh, acoustic guitar, singer-songwriter, to rock and roll, to classical, to um, hip hop, and world music, and jazz, and really everything you can imagine. I think we have no country western this year, but every, <laughs> everything else pretty much. We'll fix that next year. <laughs> uh, uh, and talk about the people, because some of them, they strike me, that, I mean, I've seen some out of state licensed place, nothing, nothing wrong with that, but, but on the other hand, you've got some local town, people who are in the neighborhood doing mm -hmm. things all the time, even, even yourself actually. Mm -hmm. So we, yeah, we work hard to get pull out the talent in the neighborhood, and it is called Jamaica Plain Porch Fest, and we do like to try to feature a lot of musicians from all the parts of, of Jamaica Plain and all the different groups of people who live there, but we also are welcoming of anyone who wants to perform. So we also, and we really do want to encourage people to come from other parts of Boston and sometimes other states. <laughs> Yes, maybe, uh, because uh, among the local things we should maybe uh, shout out to you uh, are Hyde Square Task Force. They have some youth performers there. Yeah, so, we, you know, you may know that now Hyde Square Task Force has purchased the Blessed Sacrament Church. And um, they have, since they purchased it a couple of years ago, they've been building their arts programming. And so, in fact, through the spring, they put on this musical play called El Barrio, which was very successful and exciting. Uh, and they are going to be performing uh, a range of things in that location. So it will be music and theater. Uh, so, you know, about three hours worth of performance in Hyde Square, right in front of the church. And of course, uh, would there be anything actually inside the... the nope, it's, uh, it's outside. And, I'd say just about everything in this festival is outside. We just found out about one thing that's inside, but generally it's an outdoor festival. And we're talking with Marie Gitman and Mindy Freed from JP Porch Fest. Uh, Marie, well, the other thing is about, some people might be wondering if they haven't tried this before. Uh, uh, you've got all these different locations. Um, how do you get around? <laughs> well, the first thing is you have to accept the reality that you're going to miss 99% of what's available because you're only one person who can only be in one place. And that's... I'm not really joking. It's it's actually frustrating for most of us to know that we know there's so much great stuff happening and we can only really get to a fraction of it. Um, but 
we have this year actually a free trolley that will be making six stops and just circling repeatedly throughout the six hours. Um, and we actually have entertainment on the trolley and some, some form of tour guides. Um, we've given them free reign to do kind of what, whatever they want. So some, they'll be giving some information and also maybe performing. Um, we have free Hubway bikes for the first hundred people who sign up. Um, that's on our website. There's a link for that. We have pedicabs um, that are prepaid by the JPNDC for elders who live in JPNDC housing. And then we encourage people to use bikes and get to get around. Now, one of the things I, the, I, I noticed from one of the past years is that, you know, part of the, the act in a way is just walking down the street. You see people flowing this way and mm -hmm. flowing that way. Sometimes you don't even know where you're going. You just go with the flow. Mm -hmm. And that's a great way to do it, uh, you know, because, like I said, you're going to miss most of it anyway. It's nice to just pick a place to start and just wander and see what you run into. Mindy, what about the effect of, of going to something like this um, and, and sort of drifting with it, but you end up seeing things that you wouldn't have seen before? I think that, you know, part of our mission is really to pull people together across the divides of race and class and culture and, at this point, immigrant status, that, you know, people who are in this, even in a neighborhood that's considered as diverse as Jamaica Plain, is partially segregated by all those dynamics. And so we feel that a festival like this, where people will seek out all kinds of, you know, music and other art forms in parts of town that they may never have visited before, um, really starts to break down some of those barriers. And our intent is um, to take, you know, essentially what we have is people's homes slash porches, which are private spaces opening up uh, to become public art venues. And that there's something fairly profound about that, that everybody's welcome, everybody can go anywhere they want to go. And um, I think that, you know, the, the, the feeling that kind of permeates the air is that there's a lot of love. Um, and perhaps that's kind of the strongest piece that everybody feels like it's, this is really something special. Marie, I guess one of the other special things is that if, if you, even if you live in the neighborhood, you, you walk around, you, you enjoy some of the performances, and then you say, all right, oh, there's a place to eat around here. Uh, I mean, isn't there some sort of arts, you know, trickling into the economy going on here, too? Absolutely, and we, we have partnered with a lot of the local, local organizations and local businesses who are now sponsoring and very, very involved, and some of them are also porches. Um, so they become music venues for the day as well. Really, finally, I, I know if people uh, want to uh, you know, really get the most out of this, I'm, I'm sure they want to look at what's on the menu, maybe try to make some guesses about <laughs> where should they start from. So you've got all kinds of details uh, online here. So how, how do they find right. that? So we really advise people, if they're so motivated, uh, to go online, take a look what's there, and. Um, you know, maybe have a plan of action and then be ready to deviate from it. Um, I think that, you know, as Marie was saying, there's so much there and it's a little overwhelming. Uh, but if you have a sense of the things, the sort of the must do kinds of things that are in your mind, and then you kind of follow your nose and go with the flow, and then be open to jumping on the trolley. Um, you know, or even if you're a biker, we have uh, the Bikes Not Bombs is doing a bike tour this year. and We're uh, working with Boston Tenant Coalition that's developed a kind of a, um, added to the, the bike tour a whole series of activist uh, victories um, in the housing area. So there's, you know, they could be part of the bike tour as well. Great. So, and this is on, was it jpporchfest.org? Yes, uh, that's right. Great, great. Thank you both very much, Mindy Freed and Marie Gitman. It's a pleasure. From Thanks. JP Porch Fest. Thank you.